Greetings and hello everybody, I'm Kaiser Louisfield V coming to you today um, to make a video on the subject of basically what I was talking about um, already uh, in my other stuff about, you know, if you haven't seen my blog post already, I'll put it in the description below. Um, I've had some political mindset changes, um, you know, a lot of people have noticed or said that I'm anti-American or, you know, I've, I've, I've gone on record saying, you know, I don't support the American Revolution, I've gone on record saying a lot of that stuff. Uh, etc. etc. There's a whole lot of it, and I won't bore you with it because the blog post has been out for a while. And if you haven't read it already, I suggest you read it before continuing with this video because otherwise you're going to be very confused about why I'm saying the things I'm saying that seem to contradict stuff I've already said in the past. So um, I'm going to talk touch on something that I didn't really talk about in my blog post, which is sort of the hows and the whys where I got from you know as an American citizen not liking America and you know, let me let me try and explain that. Um, to make a long story short, when I was going through school, you know, high school, you know, um, I was becoming a monarchist and I was becoming a medievalist, and to an extent, I am still those things. Um, you know, I am still I, I believe a monarchy is the best thing for the United States. How it's how is it going to happen? I don't know. Um, maybe something along the veins of how Julius Caesar became the first emperor of Rome. Um, I really don't know. Um, and I would be very careful about who we let have that spot as Americans, um, because while I will, until the day I die, um, you know, speak on the virtues of monarchy um, to anyone who asks, I think we need to be very careful, especially with Republican countries like us who have never had monarchies, we need to be very careful about who we put up for our first monarch. We need to be very, very careful about that. Um, you know, we need, basically, in my mindset, the best thing for that would be a Catholic version of Julius Caesar or Charlemagne or something like that. Um, we have to be really careful about who we let have that spot because the way I'm looking at it, we're more, believe it or not, we're more likely to have a group like the Tea Party or NSM raise up some kind of monarchist leader for the United States. And I don't know about you, but I don't feel good about those guys having someone like Sarah Palin, you know, having, you know, being, you know, Queen Sarah the first. I'm not really, I'm not really on board with that, uh, idea for the United States because we can do we, we, we can do way better than I could see Russia from my front porch and that kind of stuff we can do much better um, but when I the reason the reason I became a monarchist in high school had a lot to do with because when I was Catholic um, I changed a lot and gained a new respect for you know the medieval period and things like that I had had a very Lord of the Rings-esque idea about the medieval period you know very very amateur very amateurish and immature ideas about the medieval period and just really uneducated ideas um, and I was re-educating myself and becoming smarter about that and really the thing that always ticked me off about history in high school was how they just glossed over the medieval period and of all the things they could always mention to say they would always say how evil the Catholic Church was and how terrible monarchy was and yada 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 you know let's ignore the statistics today that monarchies are in the top ten for living conditions and ec economies in the world. You know, let's let's ignore that completely. Um, and you know, some of these countries are such wealthy exporters. You know, that because of their valuable resources that they possess, that you know, they they honestly are not in. You know, they may not have massive royal armies. You know, but they don't really need them because no one's going to try and take their stuff because they have so much money that and influence. You know, that they don't need to go to war um, to establish their power. But Moving on, I was always ticked off about how they represented the medieval period and how they handled it. Um, it always just really bugged me. And, you know, when it got, because my, my view of it was that, you know, of course America has to hate all monarchies and everything because they have to validate their own existence. You have to understand this was coming from someone who didn't think the Re American Revolution was valid, you know, or justified. Um, so I was like, of course they have to hate on monarchies and they have to build themselves up, you know, to be, to be better, you know, to be cool. Um, and to keep people from questioning too much their own entire existence. Um, but, and, and American history always bored me and always just disgusted me because, you know, it, to me it was an endless, it was just an endless batch of fuck-ups. I mean, like I said, if you read the blog post down below, you'll see I'm much more educated on the subject now. I've learned better, um, you know, through some helpful people and through some of my own initiative and through some happenstance, I've learned better and I've become smarter about that. Um... But at the time, it just seemed to me like all this terrible stuff I was hearing, all this stuff about, you know, how America's evil and bad and, 
you know, all this terrible stuff we've done, always focusing on how we continuously screw things up. Um, you know, I always thought that was just, you know, I always, I, I felt like for some reason I was the only one that was seeing that these things that were bad, because I would point out, you know, like, in, you know, in group project discussions, I'm like, hey, you know, this is kind of douchey, this is kind of a douchey policy, isn't it, this is kind of a douchey thing to say or do, you know, and they're like, oh, what, what are you talking about, no, 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 you know, what are you talking about, you know, and, but they, they thought it was, you know, they were largely okay with it, or they didn't put much thought into it, and, you know, somebody who, can't stop thinking, hence why I'm making a video at 3 in the morning when I have work. Um, um, you know, I, I, as someone who can't really stop thinking, it bugged me that people weren't thinking about these sort of things. But, and so, really, ironically enough, American public school, American high school, and that interface with, you know, America's youth culture and those people's parents, you know, and through the area I lived in and through, you know, public school education made me hate America. Now, pardon me, you know, but if you're going to make state-funded education, I would, if you're going to get that kind of power, I would at least make it my business to make my own country seem likable. You know, I, I don't see that, I, I, you know, I wouldn't pay somebody to say bad things about me. I don't know, I, I, I don't, I, didn't, I couldn't quite fathom that we would say bad things about ourselves, but, you know, apparently that's the way it is, because there were so many simple little facts that I didn't know about America that suddenly made everything make sense. Um, you know, the history of, the actual history of the relations between Native Americans and the 13 colonies, going back to um, the French and Indian War, um, you know, the issues surrounding the Mexican-American War, um, why we got into the War of 1812, um, you know, that we actually won Vietnam pretty much, but the Tet Offensive made it look like we... It made people feel like we weren't winning, even though the Tet Offensive, you know, failed to accomplish all of its objectives for the Viet Cong. We technically still won, um, you know, even though we didn't accomplish our objectives because we pulled out. In terms of force, we won, but you know, no one ever told me that. Um, and I have lots of um, I have lots of uh, family members who were in Vietnam, and one in particular, my uncle, one of my uncles, is a Marine who was literally on the first boat with the first batch of Marines that went into that went into Vietnam, into Saigon and all that. He, I mean, he was there for all of it. He was there for everything. Um, and, of course, he doesn't like to talk about it. Um, you know, the only way you would know a Marine is because he has a Marine sticker, you know, on, on, on the back of his truck. You know, I mean, he doesn't, uh, he, he doesn't really glory in it. Um, but um, there's so much stuff I didn't learn, I didn't know. And I was shocked that and all the time I'd gone to high school. And, you know, you got to believe me. I didn't enjoy disliking America, okay? It distanced me from reality, and it put me in a position where, you know, it's good to have appreciation for your historic, for the, you know, the kingdoms of Europe and your forefathers and things like that. It's very good to do that. The past is a roadmap that guides us. But when you can't ground that in a present reality, that, that, that really hurts. I mean, I don't know if anybody really can identify with what I'm saying here when you literally feel completely displaced. I mean to wake up every day and feel like what you love is just one step farther away from you, you know? Like, you're on a boat, and there's someone you love on the shore, and against your will, this boat just keeps sailing further and further away, you know, and you can't turn around, you can't do anything about it, and you're just getting farther and farther away from them, just drifting out into the sea. And that was a terrible, terrible feeling, and I, I would not wish that upon anybody, you know? I, I literally would not, you know? So, you know, some American kid, some teenager or something, you know, that is really kind of down and out about their country, about the way things are, you know, just cheer them up, you know, do your own re do your own research, you know, send them to somebody that knows stuff, you know, to help them out, you know, because believe me, they may act all high and mighty intellectually on top of their ivory towers, but they feel like shit. I can promise you they feel like complete human garbage. They feel useless and worthless. I can absolutely promise you as being one of them and being among them, I, I literally swear to you. Same thing with adults, too. They, they all feel that way. Even if they won't, the, they won't, publicly, or some of them won't even privately admit it, um, but you can tell. And really what this video is about is, is, is you know, it's a call to self-reflection for Americans and for everyone in particular concerning their own history. You know, Benjamin Franklin set, thought that the key to a successful republic was a well-educated, literate citizenry. He thought that was the most important thing, which is why he opened some of the first public libraries in the 13 colonies. He thought that was immensely important, you know, because if people weren't smart, weren't independent, you know, weren't taking care of themselves, you know, they, they would eventually be duped by somebody. You know, somebody would show up and play the system, and they would 
you know, before they know it, they would be de facto slaves. So, you know, it would be it would be terrible, you know, because whereas, you know, when Great Britain and Parliament subverted their authority <clears throat> with the taxes they laid down, Americans could fight back. <clears throat> I mean, really, any kind of uprising against the U.S. military in, in the United States that does not have some serious backing from foreign powers that can compete with the U.S. from a naval and air, sport, and air superiority perspective is doomed to fail. I mean, people can argue the South will rise again and all that idiocy, but here are the facts. Literally everything they thought they could do to win was wrong. All the North had to do was blockade southern was blockade southern ports with their superior navy and block their trade routes into the west and into the north and into the south and to Mexico. All they had to do was stop them from getting there. And the, so the southerners may have been good fighters, but they couldn't feed themselves. They couldn't clothe themselves, and they couldn't. And some people were leaving because they weren't getting paid. You know. They ran out of bullets, they ran out of food, they ran out of supplies, they ran out of everything. And you can't compete with an army that has railroads and steam engines and a constant steady flow of supplies and cannons and guns. You know, you can't compete with that with just raw bravado. You know, this is proved by the fact that, you know, despite endless advisories against it, you know, southern commanders still kept going for full frontal charges into Union lines when, you know, rifle technology and war strategy had invalidated those tactics, you know, because, you know, musket char bayonet charges in the Civil War had an 80% casualty rate. You know, 80% casualty rate. That means two out of ten people are going to make it to the enemy lines in the first place, and then they're probably going to get stabbed, they're going to get cut to ribbons. But that's not what the subject of this video is. See, the point is, as Americans, we need to learn about our history. I really started at my library. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to wise up a bit here. You know, don't pick up some book by somebody who's on Fox News all the time or on MSNBC all the time about American history. Get something from somebody who's a historian. Get an older book, maybe the 90s or the 80s or something, or get newer books that are written by people who are accredited, you know, who have backing. You know, don't buy books about the military, you know, from some written by some self-published college nut. You know, get you know, like this book I have right here. This book I have right here, ah, extremely helpful resource. Extremely helpful resource. You know, this book I got from my local library. Um, you know, the army, the army from the Army Historical Foundation. You know, written by actual, you know, you know. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Actual people. You know, veterans of the United States military. You know, high rank, high ranking guys. You know, the people that worked on this. You know, these these were not people looking from the outside in. These were people who lived it and breathed it and know what they're talking about. You know, um, and you know. You're either gonna you're either gonna leave the U.S. military loving America, or you're gonna have a really hard time. Um, so, you know that that's the way it is. But anyway, more on subject. I'm really making this video to ask everybody to really take some time to self-reflect. You know, America is at a turning point right now. We are at a focal point, and we can go one of two ways. The past several times we've been at this point, we've gone ahead and we've pulled through, you know, but every time it's been a narrower and narrower shave, you know, and it's getting really close, you know, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to speak for anything, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to think, I'm not going to tell you what to feel, you know, because I have to agree with Mr. Franklin on, with Mr. Franklin on this. It is important that we as Americans and that we as people become well educated in our own country's history and its political processes you know if you know about kim kardashian's latest nudes but you don't know who your state senators and Congre congressional representatives are if you don't know who your district representatives are if you don't know who your voting representatives are if you don't even know who your mayor is you are what is wrong with the system right now if your experience with politics is solely when election season comes around and old red and blue show up and they start duking it out and you're supposed to pick one and ignore all these other guys who have legitimate ideas and good points you know who are speaking good ideas and getting ignored because we only go to the big parties on all the big news channels you're the problem you know if 
you literally leave your cha- your your, te- your TV station on Fox News or you know MSNBC, but you don't even know what C-SPAN is, you are a part of the problem. You know, we have to become self-educated as Americans. We have to become independent as Americans, not just intellectually, but economically. We have to become, you know, we literally have to become self-sufficient people. We have to learn for ourselves what America is, and then we have to come together on our shared identity as Americans, you know. But that's not going to happen if we keep waiting for people to tell us what to think and what to feel, you know. Believe me, the truth is out there, and the truth will tell you and will motivate you to action, you know. For me... I'm joining the U.S. military. I think literally almost the best of everything in the United States, its heritage, its tradition, its history, can be credited to the military. I think any nation, its military should be the salt of the nation. You know, it is the best of the best. You know, at the end of the day, the military is what keeps, you know, I mean, if you want to know what happens to a country that doesn't take its military seriously, ask pre-modern era Poland. They got split up by Austria and Prussia and Russia. You just did, literally, they just wrote treaties and divided the land in ownership between the three of them, and it was almost 200 years before Poland was an independent nation again. You could hate the military all you want, but if they vanish tomorrow, your life would get a lot harder and a lot less free. So that's what I've decided to do. I've decided to join the military. Yeah, I know I'm a fat body. You can make fun of it all you want. You're not the first person to point out that I'm a tub of lard, all right? But I'm changing that. I'm running in the mornings. I'm getting fit. I'm I'm dieting, I'm working out, and I'm going to get fit, and I'm going to, I'm going to walk into that recruiter's office, I'm going to be ready to go, you know? I decided I'm going to go to college, I'm going to plan to go to college, ROTC, become an officer, and I'm going to go in as one, I'm in the infantry. That's what I've decided to do. That is what I've been motivated to do, you know? I think that's what I need to do to best serve my country. And I think it bears mentioning self-sufficient doesn't mean radical individualism. As Americans, um, America is a group effort, okay? As much as we praise the individual, you know, and, uh, America is a group effort, okay? The people, it wasn't just George Washington and the Founding Fathers and Thomas Jefferson and John Adams who made America. It was them and all the people who stood together with them, you know? As much as America hates authority, you know, we recognize some people just know what the heck they're talking about and we need to listen. And you need to keep your eyes open for those kind of people, the people that know what they're talking about and know what they're doing, and you need to be on the lookout for them. You know? Don't just go to these guys you know, because they have the big tent parties and they have good speaking skills. Anybody can have good speaking skills, but is anything that they're saying worth anything? That's the important question to ask. And so I'm going to leave it there. Just ask you, you know, go to your, start with your library. Forget the Internet. You know, go to the library. You know, look up stuff on American history. Look up stuff on you know, American military history. Just anything about America. You know, and start reading for yourself. You know, go online, you know, check, you can go online too, you know, just watch, where, don't go to some stupid blog, you know, find some actual histor- historical sources, historical societies, things like that. People who are going to have first-hand sources they can quote to you and show to you and know what they're talking about. You know, really start learning, start educating yourselves, okay? Because think about this, people. You want to know where I learned to hate America? I learned to hate America in its school system. I learned to hate America from what they were teaching me, okay? I was listening to that, and I said... I want no part of that. I don't want to be a part of that. I refuse to identify with that nonsense. Whether or not you agree with public education, and personally I don't, or I think it needs to be seriously changed and reformed to be more family and home-centered, whether, whatever your opinion is on that, there is a problem with an educational system that makes someone hate their country, that makes them have a negative opinion of it, not an opinion of, okay, this is bad, we need to fix that, not a, a straight-up opinion of hate. And I wasn't the only person to feel this way. There were lots of people who felt that way, but, you know, just didn't say anything. You know, I, I was just more vocal because my problem is I've, I've never learned to shut up. <laughs> but that's so what I'm going to leave, I'm gonna leave you with now. You know, just do your reading, do your research, you know, find out about, learn about your country in the way only you can. You know, have a journey of self-discovery. You know, you know Sergeant York was not convinced that fighting in the U.S. Army was the right thing to do. You know, even when he went into Germany, he was still not convinced it was the right thing to do. But when he was, you know, so the story goes, when he was getting ready to go, you know, when he was at, you know, basic training, you know, the camp commander found out that York was a conscientious objector. You know, even though he was an excellent shooter at the ranges, you know, he was an excellent shooter. But he was a conscientious objector, didn't want to fight. And he gave him a book about American history, and York read that. And that inspired him to believe that fighting for his country was the best thing to do. It was the right thing to do. 
So we all need to kind of have a Sergeant York moment here. We need to go back, we need to read our history, you know, specifically look for those hot button issues that you have a problem with in America, and look for the good, look for the people that were making changes, positive changes, and positive strides for making America better. You know, really challenge yourself. You know, really push yourself outside your comfort zone. Because, you know, you only grow through adversity. And since this video is somehow recorded this long and not broken, I'm going to leave this here. All right. So take my word for it. You know, especially my I have friends still who are shocked about my sudden change in political opinions. You know, I'm just going to tell them what I wish somebody had told me. It's not the way it looks. Things aren't as bad as they seem. They are bad, but they're not as bad as they seem. And there's still hope. You just have to find it.